Hello, I'm Jason Walters, and today in IPR X Game Room, we're going to be talking about Necronautilus. All right, today we're going to tech, uh, talk about the stoner metal inspired game Necronautilus. Now, AC had already actually not only read Necronautilus, <clears throat> but backed it on Kickstarter, and the fact that it's here is because <laughs> she had discovered it. Uh, but as, as the company's actual like resident stoner metal fan, uh, I felt sort of morally obligated to be the one that does the review of this. Uh, I'd like to start out by saying that when I read the book, uh, I made a point of listening to the Swords Warp Riders during the entire time because, in fact, basically this game is the Swords Warp Riders, more or less. So, um, Necronautilus is a game in which you play uh, clouds of poisonous gas who have been sent out by death to explore, catalog, and deal with issues uh, in the afterlife, but the afterlife in Necronautilus takes the form of an infinite galaxy of everything that ever has been or ever will die, uh, with death being the active concept. Now, you work for death. You are literally called uh, death agents, uh, and you have a ship. The ships are called Nautiluses. And they are bizarre, undead, kind of uh, cephalopodic, or whatever have you want to define it, necromantic spaceships. Um, you travel between planets uh, on them uh, to uh, deal with things that death wants uh, either uh, observed or solved. Um, <clears throat> the entire aesthetic of the game uh, it completely comes from the genre of heavy metal known as stoner metal. Uh, and what stoner metal is, uh, is an attempt to go back to the roots of heavy metal in the 1970s uh, and sort of um, throw out uh, everything that kind of occurred. But let's, let's look at one of the horrible turning points of being met of metal as being when Judas Police re recorded Turbo. So when Judas Priest recorded Turbo, that was the apocalypse of heavy metal. So you're going. So the whole point of stoner metal is to go back to metal before that period, and that is why the actual cover of uh, Necronautilus really looks like a 1970s Judas Priest album cover, like something uh, from like Sin After Sin or uh, um, uh, 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 Stained Class. Or um, sorry, having a slight mental lapse. Uh, 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 I don't know. It looks like a '70s metal album cover. What can I say? Um, so the entire aesthetic uh, of the book internally, which I will uh, I will show you a little bit of, uh, and there is also a, a very helpful zine supplement, which I'll, I'll, which does some structural things. I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, as you can as you can see in this, you're really looking at the aesthetic, the visual aesthetic of this game, being uh, that uh, it's as if it was drawn by that guy with the Megadeth T-shirt that sat in front of you in your junior year of high school, carving things literally onto his desk. That guy, that guy did the art for this. Um, uh, so <clears throat> those are the basic narrative elements. You are a group of poisonous gas clouds with slivers of soul stuck in them being sent by death through a sort of 1970s science fiction afterlife, like traveling the galaxy, doing things for death. There you are. Now, structurally though, the game's very interesting from a gamer's perspective. And that's not really what the game's about. The game is actually more about memories and words. So your uh, character sheet, which is of course, a surrealistic skull. I mean, of course. Um, that again, looks like it was drawn by the guy that sat in front of you in your junior year of high school. Um, it is a list of both power words because you have vast influence over the, over the running of reality based on your power words and kind of a reservoir of words you can use but aren't yet power words. Uh, and words 
sometimes expand or suffer from their use in this game. So you can literally lose letters out of your words and have to restructure them depending on the game effects. Um, memories are extremely important. You begin the game with none. You, you have one memory of your previous life. Uh, and that memory is the reason you became a, a, a death agent. Um, so you, you have that memory and it is the foundational memory of your character. Uh, you also have kind of a, a certain number of life points that can max out at 30 or deplete all the way to zero. Now you're already dead. And in fact, everything you're encountering is dead, except some things aren't dead. Some things actually get born and come to life in this undead galaxy, which is very confusing, but there you are. Don't worry too hard about it. The way this all works is you have a sliding scale of zero to, to 30 life points. And uh, if, you, if you achieve 30, your gas cloud, poisonous gas cloud body, body actually consolidates into a semblance of your previous life body, and you basically remember your previous life, and death fires you. <laughs> if you're lucky, death finds some nice undead planet to put you on where you can go do your yucky living thing. Uh, but death is not enthusiastic about that. Um, or if you get all, if you lose your life points, and all sorts of in-game effects can cause one or the other, and it's tied to and triggered by, often by memories, you acquiring memories of who you were, slides your life scale up and down. Um, if you uh, if you get down to zero, your gas cloud dissipates, and you, I, I guess you're just sort of a hovering undead spark waiting to get their act back together again. Um, but you can't really have any in-game effects. Uh, and in theory, your in-game effects are considerable because you have these word, these these uh, power words you can use to reshape the reality of of the vast necropolis galaxy you live in. Except there's pushback. Now, structurally in this game, it is based on conflicts between yourself and the crew of your Nautilus uh, and various uh, worlds that you spontaneously create as you arrive at them uh, through a pretty simple and, and amusing process having to do again with words. Everything's about words in this game, words and meaning. Uh, you create your opponents, you create the planets. Uh, as you land on them through a series of sort of word structuring exercises that involve investment of your library of words that you've accumulated to do. Um, uh, the uh, result of this uh, is that you, you do go through a series of conflicts as you go to each planet, and those conflicts revolve around um, pie, char pie charts, really, basically. Um, which you have a circle, and depending on the complexity of the adversary or situation you're dealing with, have anywhere from like two to eight slices. Uh, and each step of the way, uh, as you narratively complete something, and never slice gets filled in. So this is obviously a, a concept uh, borrowed um, from um, Blades in the Dark. It was the first time I ever saw it. Maybe it was out there somewhere before, but the first place I ever saw it was Blades in the Dark. Uh, and it's a really useful concept. Because though you do, there are gamist elements to this game. There are points. You have to track them. Really, it's not about that. It's really about word pools uh, and expending words and getting new words, uh, which, which actually comes in uh, where, where the supplement, the zine supplement comes in. It, it includes a lot of new words. Uh, it includes uh, a lot of new memories. Uh, your, your reason for becoming a death agent is called your reason. It includes a whole list of reasons. Um, so not only do you spontaneously uh, create um, uh, planets and creatures on the planets using words to assemble them through simple exercises, <clears throat> the same thing goes through the missions that death sends you on. Uh, so there's a whole, it, it's not super complicated. It's really actually very simple. This is, this is uh, in spite of its rather uh, amusing and unique uh, you know, graphic design, which looks like a Sirith Ungol album from 1981. Actually, the, the exercises to complete, to, to create your missions and your adversaries, both large and small, and planets of various sorts, are actually uh, all storytelling stuff and done pretty quickly in a pretty structured manner. Uh, the supplement comes with a bunch of them pre-done, like a bunch of adversaries and a bunch of planets uh, and a bunch of missions. Think of the missions as being sort of like adventures. Um, all pre-created, along with a bunch of other, there's a short story sort of in there uh, about, about the life of a death agent. Uh, it's, it's pretty funny uh, and disturbing because everything about this game is pretty funny and disturbing. Um, uh, the, it all revolves around D6s uh, rolled for some reason not in threes, as in D666, but in D D D66, like two dice. Everything is based around rolling 
like either one or two d6 at the same time. It's, it's kind of uh, amusing uh, and strange uh, little system. But you know, for any of you who are, who are experienced gamers and everyone watching this is, uh, pretty intuitive, not hard at all to wrap your head around. Um, so there we are, uh, Necronautilus. And to get Necronautilus and its zine supplement, uh, follow the links below to purchase it from Indie Press Revolution and follow us on the social medias, the Facebooks, the Twitters, the Instagrams. Subscribe to our newsletter. And remember, gamers, death is blind.